It is time for Gold League again, and it is time for our meatballs. The team Boluo, the Swedes are at it again. Schwimpy, Gia, Poik, and Wubi with the help of 365 playing today once again. And once more, this is Gold League, which means that we're relying on a clean feed here. Therefore, I have absolutely zero control over the observer interface or the camera control. So I can't unfortunately show you stats or stacks. And we're also relying on uh, the original HGC UI. Therefore, we don't have the interface that we normally use for Division S, for Meta Madness, and also for terms like the Nut Cup. But let's find out if our Swedes can advance a little bit. So far, the tournament, of course, has been uh, pretty... We had a lot of very decisive games, let's put it that way. This is a tournament where more than 160 teams have participated. Gold League was open to all, so there's a lot of amateur teams playing there too. And then on the other hand, you have quite a couple of former pro teams, or at least pro players that are joined with friends. And obviously, they have an upper hand with all the experience and the mechanical skills that they have. So currently in Taiwan, uh, the Swedes that are participating in this tournament, and of course the first goal for them is to reach the round of eight to make sure that they are part of the offline experience and making it to the offline event itself. We're currently in the round of 32 and the entire system has changed a little bit because starting in the round of 32, the bracket is split into four parts where we have a lower bracket as well. And as we're heading into Volskaya, we have a Kerrigan first pick. That's an interesting setup, but at least we're getting Tyrael with it. Okay, so I'm a little bit more on board with the Kerrigan right now, but I'm still questioning the priority of the pick here. A very aggressive one, whereas Boluo heads straight into uh, their Hanzo pick. If I'm not wrong, then Bolu has actually already played two or at, at least two, maybe even three matches in China here in the Gold League and they absolutely stomped to an extent where at some point I asked Schwimpy even dude can you send me over the replays from your last match and I'm gonna commentate that for YouTube and he just simply told me dude it's not worth it it's like we totally didn't, uh, obliterated them it wasn't even close it's just total stomp so now they find themselves into in the round of 32 and it should start to become a little bit closer but they are definitely still the favorite in this match don't get me wrong here Wubi has transitioned into the tank role, as we've seen in the past now. We have them currently with Turana played and Hanzo. Could have even added that Jaina. The problem, of course, is that King Stripe, their opponent here today, is playing with a setup that already caters a bit to trying to, like, at burst for the extra damage after a Kerrigan combo. So I think Bolo just tries to play it quite, quite f uh, pretty safe and just says, like, you know what, Jaina, yeah, we'd like to have her. But let's make sure that they can't get her. We still have other picks out there that might just be better suited for us. So our next two picks. Coming in, I think. That timer's on zero for a very, very long time. I don't even know how you do that. <laughs> That's not even a random pick. Uh... <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but I've never seen that before. <laughs> okay, apparently our observer has a bit of a problem. <laughs> That's an interesting draft to say the least. A 3-2-3 three, three moment there, but I think I think I glanced at a Medivh as we were jumping out of this one. We have a Jimmy at the bottom. I don't know. What, okay, there we go. Medivh Arthurs. I like that a lot what I see on the left side. We don't see anything on the right side, so I can't talk about that. But I love the idea of portaling Arthurs into the opponent's backline and trying to rip them apart. Figures, of course, that problems like this start to uh, turn up once that we're having the team that we're the most interested in. But as it happens, let's go straight into our first game on the Sky of Foundry and see how the Swedes do here against King Stripe. Game on! We are on Volskaya Foundry, game number one. <laughs> Let's take a quick look at King Stripe and their lineup, as our draft had some issues there. The observer that joined the game, who provide of course that clean feed for us, apparently with some technical problems. So we have a white main that got added to the draft. Rayner and Malthael joined it too. So an actually aggressive setup for fights, but very, very weak when it comes to hit points. So you have only Tyrell at the front, can of course provide the shield, but they don't have any kind of beefy side laner that would help them. 
it's going to be tricky for them, especially since Malthil is going to have a rough time getting the last rides through with Shrimpy on Mediv. And the entire setup that we have from Bolowo is actually brutal. If you get that portal set up so that Arthur's moves into the back line, you will see them get a serious amount of value out of this one. So I'm currently very, very interested to see how this is going to uh, work out for our Chinese team, for King's Tribe, because I would definitely say that Bolo has a much better draft here. And obviously, given the players that they have on their side, they are the favorite too. And they're showcasing that against Kerrigan here right away. Instantly, not even a minute into the game, we have the first kill for Bolo as the Swedes are coming in, dropping the spray as well. Not properly connected though, only the hero spray. Nothing fancy. Going in again for White Mane being dropped, and that's exactly the setup that we've been talking about earlier. They go in deep on. <laughs> Nearly killed Tyrael as well. Nicely done. So yeah, they are absolutely murdering at this point with two kills and nearly a third confirmed. They are looking strong in the early stages. Of course, there is a bit of a potential momentum swing for King's Tribe if they are able to get those kills and that carry can set up properly. Maybe with a sanctification lined up later on too. But for the time being, it's all about Bodo. They are the favorite in the series. They want to make it into the round of eight and as former pro players with a lot of experience and the technical and mechanical skills of course too. They should be the ones that dominate the action on the map here. But we'll find out if King Stripe can maybe claim a game here or maybe even decide the series in their favor. Keep in mind there is a lower bracket, so whoever loses is going to drop into the lower bracket and has another shot at making it to uh, the round of eight where they would be able to attend the offline finals of the Gold League season here. So they have a Slavin Poik poking around. And, again, quick reminder, not actually observing this myself, we're relying on a Chinese clean feed, that's also why the UI gets used here. And unfortunately I can't show you stacks like the Behemoth armor stacks for Jimmy because of that. But our observer every now and then has actually shown us those and uh, we're gonna have to rely on him to do that later on. For the time being, we have both of the teams on level 4. Tyrell actually also with the build going into his uh, Regeneration Globe talent on level 1. We really see that all that often anymore, to be honest with you. So a bit of adjustment on the side of his talents. And that is definitely going to happen a lot more as we're entering the later rounds here. Especially with China having their own particular meta. You will see certain flavors that just don't exist in the same way in Europe. Nice attack against 365, but Wubi is already around. He got to help out as they're jumping for Kerrigan again. There's the throw back into the line. Kerrigan still trying to jump out. And the rest of the team is just a bit too late. We still see Hanzo at the top lane doing his uh, thing here. So yeah, the Ardent Restoration for Tyrael. It's going to be interesting seeing if he can actually stack that. We'll keep our eyes open for the completion here. But especially top side is pressured pretty heavily. Ghost X for King Stripe. Having a bit of trouble against Poik here who's dodging everything so far. And is still pushing in with that camp that they took earlier. We of course have already the progress bar started up on the first objective as Bolo was trying to claim it here and again using the portals to set this up aggressively. Bam! Down goes White Mane. Gets the axe to the face and that only not only provides a new haircut for White Mane but also another death on the board for her. Seven against six now. Half a level ahead. Three kills against zero. And with the Celestial Attunement, a fantastic talent that they now also have to make sure that they can deal with all those combos that are happening on the other side. I'm actually messing up a little bit as well because despite the uh, the icon for Tyrael's level 1, ooh, Malthael goes down. Another portal counter. Yeah, despite the uh, the actual um, icon for Tyrael's level 1, isn't it not, that's not even the regeneration globe talent, my bad. So kind of used to see that particular type of icon reflect talent choices, especially of course on uh, heroes like Nubarak and others, but yep. Instead, just trying to get a little bit of Tyrael heal in. And I'm not quite sure if that's really the pick. I mean, I mean again, it's still a talent I kind of never really seen on the hero, and I'm a little bit surprised that they go for that variation. That makes me also very eager to see what's happening around level 10. We have still problems with our stream here, unfortunately, as that thing is just becoming more and more unstable. Which is also kind of sad. But we're back. Uh, 
Bolo right now with the first protector. Walking straight through that top lane. I'm trying to get a bit of value here. Prepping the top lane for objective number two. <laughs> Shrimpy. It's like he's basically just throwing, showing them the carrot. And then the rest of the team brings the stick. Protector nearly taking down Tyrell here too. About to take him down here. But yeah. I mean, right now, two-level lead already for Boluo. The King's Tribe in quite a bit of trouble with this. Top lane, Fountain has also been taken down. Important part, of course, when you're trying to prep for that. The level 10 abilities would actually... With a two-level lead at this point, with level 10, you can pretty much take whatever you want on the map. And if you have Medivh 2, you can portal behind a fort, you can portal behind the keep, no matter where you are, you aren't safe if you're on the right side. So again, there comes the action with the portal in the back. They don't have level 10 just yet, so they're still sticking around for a little bit longer, trying to get the experience bot side first. I like that King Stripe actually takes that talent, and, uh, or takes the cap and is aggressive around it. But yeah, starting to move in here. Wubi gets attacked by Malthale. One of the counters here, but the arrow, and there we go. Alex is, sorry, White Mane is gonna fall. I even expected them to get a little bit more than only one kill, but they're barely missing out on the second kill against Malthale. Still a bit aggressive from Poik, but he should be able to get out of this. Or is he? There comes the shield. He survives for a moment, but Reyna finally with a hit, and Poik is down. But so is Malfael. And that's six kills against one now. Still a two-level lead. And a big, big advantage here for the Swedes. Talent choices outside of that. I mean, again, we have um, trying to deny a bit of the healing here from Malfael. On the level 7 talent. Icebound Fortitude for Arthur. So he's still a little bit worried about that lockdown here. I mean, again, what else would you take? You can go Rune Tap, but normally you only see that if you're also making the adjustment on level 4. And he didn't. Very standard build that we're having on Arthur's side. When it comes to, uh, to Garrosh, nothing crazy at either. I mean, they're playing a really just solid game. And it's kind of what you would expect, especially on the first map. We've seen a few of the teams that were highly favored in their series play very safe on map one get an early lead and really just trying to demolish their opponents and when they realize okay there is a gap in skill and they sometimes make the adjustment on game number two and take it a bit easier so now there's the throw on Turiel well, lockdown comes in too Carrigan with a combo attempt though and a Hyperion already being used to Ultralis comes out as well so trying to be aggressive here but the fountains can still be tapped and that's exactly what they're doing Hyperion is not going to be around for too much longer and as the objective gets announced, we're seeing that Bolo is actually far away from level 13 now too. So with this, they're starting to jump in again. Trying to maybe... Uh, 365 is trying to get some value here on Arthur. So if he can get the lockdown and Tyrande follows up on it, it's just exactly the damage setup that they need. Talking damage, Medivh is obviously going to try and complete his quest as quickly as he can. So that they have a bit more damage outside of Hanzo that they can put on. <laughs> Spray game is on point, but I gotta admit, like I'm a little bit disappointed that they apparently didn't do their homework here and equip proper sprays. Instead, it's just the standard that we're seeing getting dropped here. So if I would have to rate that, it would be a 6.5 out of 10 at the most. Yeah, another nice combo, but only against Garrosh. Whoopi is fine. The portal is still there. Here comes the job against uh, Tyrande. She's alive. Tries to turn around here. Lens has already been used in the session and he has the five man ley line <laughs> and the taunt in the middle the end of Carrigan as they're trying to get a second kill and white main falls once more they're not stopping there they're trying to get more than that and it seems like Tyriel is also going to bite the dust here Shrimpy eats quite a bit of the explosion damage but with three heroes down and level 13 now ready it's, of course, a massive problem for King's Tribe. The red team might even lose their fort before the Protector is even on the map. Absolute disastrous team fight from their perspective. And Bolo is just... Ah, just breezing through this right now. I mean, again, they are the favorites in this one, but it's just amazing to see how they deal with such an aggressive setup. There's a lot of kill potential actually through a good carrying combo if Malthiel then moves in too. But with the setup that we see, Bolo is just playing this extremely well. Five man ley line.
and just imagine that with a Jaina, for example, behind it for the setup or anything along those lines. It's not quite what we're seeing here, but even just with a taunt from Garrosh as he moves into the five, they are absolutely destroying. So it is a pretty successful first one. Nice! <laughs> another arrow from Poi connects and hits home, and they're setting up another potential kill with more ley lines from Shrimpy. That's going to be the end of at least white main and they're hoping for more as that second protector is just jumping around for kills. Poig is still alive, gets another shot in, drops Carrigan and the Swedes are representing Europe here quite well in Asia. Doing very well here in Taiwan and China at the Gold League tournament. And they're already trying to go for another setup here in the middle. As more structures you take down, the better. Again, oftentimes you will see that protector move to the bottom of the map. Try and take the fountain down to prepare for the third objective. It's one of the issues with Volskaya Foundry. Uh, to an extent, it's very predictable where the objective spawns. Talking about predictability, is very predictable what's going to happen to Reyna if he sticks around here. He realizes it too. Says, all right, got the memo. <laughs> I'm out of here. So he moves back immediately. The top side, okay, there we go. Quest completed on Arthur's, all of them, seven stacks on Tyrande. Medivh obviously already completed his quest, as we saw the five-man ley line up at the top, in case that you didn't catch it. The portal control, or the attempt at portal control through Kerrigan. It doesn't quite work for them. Two forts are down now, but the bottom of the map still has a fountain. But just look at that leading experience, they have three full levels ahead right now. And they're going for another kill attempt here. Again, an arrow. Hyperion comes out though. Three man ley line. And uh, they're not quite connecting here. But King Stripe is fighting. King Stripe is trying to get back into this. 16 versus 13. We might actually see a kill against Bolo. And yes, 3 6 5 goes down. But Malta and Tyrael have both fallen. And Carrigan follows suit. They're trying to chase the final two down. And they are on the run. A good penetrating round, but it's not going to be enough. The stun, stun from Taranda connects. So does Medivh's damage. White Mane and Reyna both fall. A full team wipe. As we have a massive, massive lead in kills for Boluo. 18 to 2. The current points on the board here in kills. <laughs> and it's, it's tough. It's honestly tough for King's Tribe. And to be fair, I mean, they are honestly trying here. And while I'm not quite agreeing with the high priority that they gave Kerrigan, I can totally see how they were able to take down their first and second round opponents here. Because they are playing an aggressive style where they're really hoping for momentum in the game. And against a weaker team that isn't as well coordinated as Bolo, I can totally see that working out. If you start snowballing this slightly. So we're definitely getting better opponents for Bolo. To compare that to the earliest rounds that we had there, yes, the kill count doesn't quite reflect it, but if you see just like the uh, idea behind what King Stripe is trying to do here and the cohesion of the setup, it's definitely starting to get better here in terms of what the opponents are capable of. And now, of course, these next few rounds are going to be important for Bolo. They made the sacrifice or the investment to travel to Taiwan to participate in this, so you want to go as far as you possibly can. So especially in the earlier games, we'll see them just invest a lot into that here. Bottom of the map objective. Get started up, but still a level away. Still a fast game though. It's 13 and a half minutes in, and now that we're having the bottom four being eliminated, the situation of course still stands. We're seeing 18 and a half on the board against 15, which means that you can't really play around even talents. Getting 16 in time is nearly impossible. Especially since Bolo is already eyeing that 20 on the horizon. So, uh. And Arthurs, 365. He has taken the bottom of the map. He's starting to channel the next objective. And this is likely going to be one that might even end the game here. Depending on the setup. If you get a couple of kills with the push, you should be able to do that. And with the aggression that they showcase through Medivh, it's definitely a possibility. Especially if you get Arthurs into that backline. With the 16 talents alone, of course, they have a lot of power spikes popping in. Arthur's himself with a shutter ground on 13 and now the follow-up on 16 for his uh, Frozen Tempest. is starting to really, really control. This is the sea amount is actually, uh, it's stunning. Pun intended. <laughs> Talking stuns. This time we're seeing Tyrell get the sanctification through. But that's a big cooldown. It was just burned. A very, very big cooldown. 
And not a single heroic ability has been sacrificed on uh, Bolu's side to make that happen. So it's another huge win for them. Despite the fact that King Stripe now has 16, they won't be able to use it, or will they? Well, there comes the attack. Malthane isn't here yet. It's a 5 versus 4, pretty much. And the double kill as Reyna is down. Tyrael is dead. The Protector is in and already moving through the bottom. They're going for the next kill here. White Mane once again obliterated. And White Mane in particular has been the punching ball of this game. Every time gets attacked here. Yeah, good move by Malthel, keeping himself alive for a few more seconds, but it only delays the inevitable. Even with the inevitable end on 13, he can't keep himself alive for longer. Has that little ice block, the bone block, <laughs> no matter what you want to call it. And we have already the keep at the bot lane about to be destroyed. And with level 20, there are any seconds. Not a single hero on the board right now. This is going to be the play for Core for game number one victory for the lead in the best of three. The adventure of Bolo in Asia continues. They are about to take game number one in the series. Obviously, you still have to win another map in order to make it to the next round of the tournament. But so far, everything is looking pretty much on point for the Swedes here. European team with the assistance of 365 is definitely delivering. They're taking down White Man again. 25 kills against two as the core falls. And well, they might get another one here. Yep, and they do. Make it 26, but the core falls regardless. And this is the lead. Bolu taking the 1 0 against King's Tribe on Moskaya Foundry. Game number two, Boluo with the lead against King's Tribe, playing a pretty good first game here, pretty dominant too. So let's have a look at our second draft as we're going into Braxis Holdout. Not necessarily the map that I expected to be taken as the second one. Boluo actually chose it, apparently, uh, as King's Tribe gets first pick and first ban. Now the aggressive strategy from King's Tribe didn't work out. <laughs> the immediate respect ban against... Garrosh. I would honestly, I would have said ban Mediv more so than anything else because that setup with the portals the entire time was absolutely insane. Right now, I'm interested if Bolo is thinking about playing with Mediv again since he still provides quite a bit of value on the map here if you want to traverse between the lanes. But obviously, you normally look at other heroes that can also do the same thing. I mean, any kind of mobility hero that is able to just move from the top to the bottom quickly usually gives you an asset. And there's a couple of things that I'm interested in, and it's mainly the top lane. We have seen so many Rexar plays in the past, I don't really think it's the style of Polo, but it would be interesting to see if teams are starting to play Rexar now also on Braxis Holdout. Rexar has started to become a pretty strong hero in Division S for a lot of the lanes where the solo lane is incredibly important. Dragonshire and Braxis Holdout definitely belong to them. There's, of course, the variation where you're trying to go into uh, a global setup. We had that played by Dignitas in the past with even the double global false that end the Haka. Then you have Urel also available, one of Wubi's oldies but goldies. But since he moved into the main tank position, I'm going to see something else here from them. Chromie even getting banned out here as we have an Alarak first pick. Probably for the top lane there. They like to be aggressive. Oh, ho, ho, ho. okay. Vala and Oriel. All right. Paul gonna try and dance around on my girl. Playing with Vala here. Likely gonna have a double support even. Could see the Tacita still in. Even the Zarya. Zarya was like the... Okay, forget the Zarya pick because she actually gets picked away here. And Kelthas gets taken too. Okay, we're talking. These guys really, really like to be aggressive. Kalthas for the wave clear. Have Zarya in the mix as well. They're definitely trying to fight. They're not giving up here yet. We had a few teams that on map number two started to meme it hard. But King's Tribe, even though they have their own flavor, they're still trying to at least add wave clear, sustainability, take a couple of picks away from the opponent. Let's see how that's gonna work out for them. And Ubarak gets banned. Could still see a frontline ban from King Stripe too if they want to limit the hero pool that is available for Wubi. Yes, and that's what they do. They go for ETC. ETC goes very well with Vala because he can control the space. 
very easily around Vala and allow her to stay a lot safer with her setup. So a pretty decent choice actually. Then again, there's other tanks out there that might not have the same ability to create space for a hero, but they are still very good to just peel. I mean, Johanna, for example, has the wave clear in addition to that as well. Could be one of the heroes that they go for. Stitches! Shrimpy locks in Junkrat, and we have Stitches, which pretty much means that we're either going to see a last pick second support, which would mean that Junkrat is likely going to take the solo lane for the earlier stages of the game, or that we have a solo support Vala. Not out of the question entirely, but you have to be cautious if you're going up against heroes like Alarak and Kel'thas as a duo. There's Anna and there's Rexa. <laughs> okay. Um, Rexa main tank, I guess? That's a wild setup here for King Stripe. That is wild, to say the least. I talked about Rexa, but still, that is a little bit insane. What's the last pick going to be on the side of Bolo? What's going to be the one? Zaratul. <laughs> okay. Oh, we have the stage set, ladies and gentlemen. We are heading into Brax's holdout as we have Boluo going up against King Stripe here at the Chinese Gold League Tournament. This should be a wild one for sure, so let's head straight into it. Game number two. Boluo in the lead, and of course they want to make this. A 2-0. Taking down King Stripe would allow them to move on to the next round of the tournament, in their case, in uh, the upper bracket. At this point, with the Vala support on the side of Oriel, it's going to be an interesting setup, especially, of course, since with the movement... Uh, Poik definitely has the mechanics to pull this off properly. That's pretty much what I'm trying to say here. Oftentimes, you see Vala players rely on a double support because she's still very much so on the squishy side. But as long as you can dodge out at most of the damage, you're definitely a decent spot. Interesting setup already. I mean, take a quick look at that Kel'Thas first pick. Now, traditionally, we're talking about either the Hero League meme talent, Convection, or we're talking about the Mana Addict, which is, of course, in any kind of amateur or pro level, the preferred talent to go for, because it gives you the survivability. But we see the Fell Infusion instead. Not really sure if that's going to be the play there. I mean, again, Mana Addict is the go-to if you're really trying to get serious value out of your hero. Zaratul, by the way, has taken the top lane against Rexa in the meantime. So down here, we don't have a proper tank at this point for King's Tribe. They're playing with Zarya and Alarak as their frontliners. Alarak himself going to look for the stacks. Would surprise me if we're going to see anything else but a multi-shot hybrid from uh, Poik. This is not really the map where you will see a lot of, like, I don't know, a lot of Creed of the Hunter, especially on that level, unless they're feeling like they're going to meme a little bit here. We'll be obviously going to look for those hooks in the long run. Shia with a support here. Sleep darts are coming through too, and... Yep, there's the hook. But dodged out Kel'Thas, not getting hit by this one anytime soon. Good job by him. In the meantime, when we're looking over towards Stitches, he has taken the patchwork creation here a lot of hungry for more just recently and with globe control on the lane you could even get value out of this one and patchwork creation still a decent, a decent one as well especially of course if you have Oriel with you the added regeneration effects and healing effects by 50% are pretty pretty solid and since you find yourself onto the lane most of the time it's actually a very nice amount of value that you're going to get from that talent just in general so a nice setup for them on the other side, the Particle Grenade being focused by Zarya as she is heading to complete that quest. We're also now seeing the first few beacons being fought over, of course. will be trying to land those hooks still, but they're starting to go for Zarya and she's in trouble. Anna tries to heal, but that's just too late. Down goes the first hero in this game. And we have Zarya fall. So Bolo again will hold at the bottom of the map. Now, to be fair, if you go up against the Rexa at the top side, it's pretty much impossible for Zeratul to get anything done there. It's pretty much impossible for him to win this. Just simply because there is Misha and Rexa to consider, so you always have to jump between the objective and the lane itself. Outside of Rexa getting killed, there is no way for him to really, really get this. So it's highly important that the bot lane is holding on to that beacon, and Bolovo is doing exactly that. They are able to pull that off. 
It's of course a slash build, a cleave build for Zara Tool with a void slash coming on 16 and we're seeing Vala now also with punishment on level 4. So about the talents that you would have expected here. And with our sweets traveling all the way to Taiwan to participate in this tournament. They're not going to meme around too much here. Again, you don't want to risk losing out on anything here. They are there for a reason. They want to go to the offline part of the event, to the round of 8. It's actually a pretty big investment on their end too, because you have to remember that this is a pretty stretched out tournament or league, depending on how you want to look at it. It's going to last for roughly two and a half or three months. So it's quite a bit of time. Obviously also a bit of an adventure for them too, to live in uh, Taiwan for the time being. That's a pretty cool opportunity at the same time. Now once again they're starting, of course, to make this the quick 2-0 with another kill coming in, taking down Anna. That's kill number three. And already Alarak working on his own quest here, as you can tell. Also highlighted by our observer as we have Kelthas in trouble. Poik wants to go in deep for the kill, but he can't just get it. But everybody is low and the problem that we have for King's Tribe is that they're losing the wall, they're starting to lose hit points on the fort itself. That bot lane is in trouble and they lose the heroes too. One down, two down. Nice double kill. Poik once more but he does not get Kelthas. But they push the entire bot lane back. And as much as Rexa holds on to the top of the map at this point, it is still a massive, massive problem for King's Tribe that they just simply can't withstand the power of the foreman at the bottom of the map here. Boluo is murdering that bot lane. And it's really difficult to make any kind of play here right now for the red team. Rexa, of course, is sitting at this saying like, guys, I'm holding up top, but you guys have still to do something down here. The problem again, you don't have a lot of lockdown. Well, you have the Alara combo, you have the... You have a couple of tools, but there's no real hard CC and the uh, first damage to follow up on it. We're currently seeing Alarak desperately trying to set something up, but he himself finds himself constantly in trouble. This being another great example as Vala gets the final hit in once more. And the train just continues. The pain train has left the station and is heading heavily towards the bottom right as we now have the fort eliminated. They're going straight for the keep. They want to take that down too. And Zaratul gets the solo kill up at the top and you can all just imagine what's happening now obviously we're going to see the beacon progress move forward for Bolo. so they're likely to also grab a zerg wave here the bot lane is nearly demolished it's gonna be interesting to see what uh, rexa does once that he comes back into this he might actually start to shift lanes no he doesn't starts moving to the top but king's tribe is losing everything and it's not even level 10 it's a two level lead it's eight kills and zero but they don't even have heroic abilities yet once that's in it's gonna get worse yeah, there comes the potential kill against Zarya. Shield is in and Poik doesn't seem to have the cooldown for the Vault ready. But they connect the hook against Alarak and that is more free damage. Schwimpy poking from the back with Junkrat during all of this. The focus again on Poik with the constant energy that is delivered in the hands of Gia. Gia is keeping everyone alive. Now of course since you don't rely on mana but have the energy mechanic here. Woo! There we go! First kill for King's Tribe. I was just about to say, you can play that game six days to Sunday as long as you keep those heroes alive and the energy up for Gia. Here comes a nice ult to save Whoopi. The heal is in and they kill against Kelthas and Zarya with another potential one against Alarak. He goes down, Gia is still alive. Ana dies too. They are getting murdered. And it's only six more points on the progress bar that's needed to also get the objective, which means Rexa can't leave. He can't leave. He has to helplessly watch at the top lane as the bottom keep is getting destroyed. Vala is actually making her way to the top lane right now. So they're giving the bottom a little bit more wiggle room as they're trying to secure that Zerg wave for themselves. And well, good luck holding that against two right now, Rexa. Misha is already getting attacked. Goes is trying to move it back. Down goes the bear. And Poik is securing the objective for them. They're taking or trying to take the camp here too. And now with Zeratul and also Vala both moving in. And level 10 still not ready for King's Tribe. They should be able to do that too. Another hook comes in. But doesn't connect here. Strafe. Might of the Nerezim taken. And with that wave, the bot lane is absolutely 
vulnerable. Not only to the keep being dropped, but if they get the kills with it, they might even just end it here. It's only eight minutes in, but look at this. Another big hook is coming through as they're trying to go for Kel'Thas. The strafe is coming in as well. The kill as Zeratul drops the bear and drops Alarak in the process. It's a triple baby. It's a quad kill. Kel'Tha, Zarya, Rexa, and Ana, they all fall to make it a team wipe. And with a keep down, the core is wide open. On Braxis Holder with 17 kills against one, Boluo is eager to get the 2-0 victory to move on to the next round of the tournament as Europe represents the Chinese gold league. GG and well played. Boluo with a big win.